have Lauren Kraft, who is one of my favorite readers. She's pretty sexy tonight. Watch, you better t I think you just need to take that scarf off. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she's also one of the most approachable poets in Columbus because I guarantee you can wrap yourself around everything she says and say, and me. All right, no, no fucking pressure. Man, Amy Turnchart bringing in the heavy hitters tonight. Just, you know, some teachers and some published authors and no big deal and me. But I'd like to say that I was here back when it was like uncool, when it was like a whole sea of drunk people yelling and you like telling your 16 year old feelings into a microphone while shaking, even though no one was paying attention. So now that I have a captive audience, a very stately podium and you know, cameras, this will be really cool. So I'll start as I always do. Sup, nerds. Poem time. <laughs> this one's called Life After Holiday. Be brave. You can go on into unhighlighted calendar days. Go with joy in your heart into a stark white box. You can go on. Christmas and Mondays are constructs, neither superior to the other. If you prepare for Tuesday as one prepares for torture, then torture it will be. But last Wednesday night was no torture. You and I wrapped bare legs around each other from 11 to midnight, played our game where I put in wax earplugs and you tell me secrets. What a magical, diary-worthy time that was. All year long, my mother waits in anticipation of a vacation. Once it comes, it's magical, and once it goes, it's tragedy. One could waste a lot of perfectly good Wednesdays this way. This one's a few years old, but it's still one of my favorites. It's called Life Underwater. And then I'll get to some funny shit, I hope, because this stuff's pretty heavy. Life Underwater. I started wearing a heart rate monitor all the time. I got it originally to figure out my threshold on my bicycle. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. When I first put it on, I guess it hadn't made proper contact. I looked at the watch. It blipped a tiny radiating pulse like a submarine Doppler, searching for a beat. My friend pulled up my shirt and licked the sensor and stuck it back to the place just beneath my breast. I laughed. There it was. Now when I walk, I look at my wrist obsessively, Dick Tracy waiting for a secret message. I am 30 now, and I worry nightly I will be too old too soon to be a mother. I worry that I am a child. I interpreted an ultrasound for a deaf person, a communication with the beyond. The doctor searched for the right spot, made contact, and I heard the muffle, muffled galloping sound of someone trying to survive underwater. I opened and closed my fist to show her the rhythm of a pulse. I have no God and I don't want one, but what I do want is a sign that I am all right. Tonight I sit on top of a closed toilet and watch water fill the bath, the best part of the day, a re-entry to the womb. Before I climb in, I remember myself, unhook the monitor from my ribs and get in. Submerged, I listen for the galloping, but hear only neighbors shifting furniture downstairs. When I'm done, I can't help the compulsion to put it back on, and when I do, I get the message. This one's called The Hills Market. I have been alone for so long now that I have developed some contempt for people not alone. You know, those people who go shopping with others. So much so that sometimes when shopping at the Hills Market downtown, I lower my shopping basket to the floor and drag it behind me like a baby blanket. I lurch my head from side to side, peer down aisles like a troll, avoiding pairs of any kind, brush my hair into my face and put my collar up. 
Once in a while, I throw some bruised fruit and a fistful of loose ravioli into my basket. Some paper towels. Use the basket as a sieve. Purposefully shaking bulk oats onto the floor while directing my contempt at a happy father-daughter combo buying organic popsicles. I do this so people will notice me alone, making a mess. Um, miss, are you okay? They'll look at the basket of random shit I have piled together. Is that for you? Yes, I'll tell them, and I will snarl. And they will look at me with deep sympathy because everyone knows how hard it is to be alone. This one's called Bridget. It's a dedication to my best friend. Last Sunday, I was driving on the highway at half speed with an almost flat tire, not afraid to die because yoga was particularly good that day. I called you because my heart was fat with love, which is what happens after yoga. I just wanted to say, as far as friends go, you were my first love. But you stopped me because you had something better to say. I'm pregnant, you said. And snot exploded onto my steering wheel. And I got to the place where joy takes the wheel, which is dangerous because joy doesn't drive. And I howled a real belly howl, the kind you can't just make because you want to. You know me in the particularly painful way that you have loved me and loathed me in the same fiscal year. We have been so many things for each other, mother, sister, lover. Today I called to tell you, maybe I don't want to die. Drunk run is what it's called. Last night was the last time that I'll go running while drunk. We ran a mile as hard as we could. It wasn't as fast as we thought it would be. Big fucking surprise. We ran on the railroad tracks, not even trying to strike on the beams, just wildly stomping gravel and garbage in the moonlight. And I want you to know that I didn't make this up for a poem. And I want you to know that it wasn't romantic, but it is wild, and that's something I don't want to stop being. This one's called ENFP, and if you're a poet and you are close to me, you're probably one of them. I am. I knew you were. <laughs> okay. Remember the time we were digging? You asked me my Myers-Briggs while a helicopter flew overhead. I told you ENFP, and I guessed you were the exact opposite. I was right. We came in just before dark, made tea for throats hoarse from yelling. You unrolled the cuffs of your pants, dumping out bits of dirt from the day. I didn't know you well enough to chide you, so I laughed and poured tea. I turned to the cupboard looking for sugar. I wanted so badly for you to come up behind me and squeeze me at the waist. But you, being my Jungian foil, would never do such a thing. Milk in your tea is disgusting, he said. Maybe tomorrow we'll dig again. Thank you so much. <laughs> 